In this video, I thought that we could check out how to automatically publish to NPM using the semantic release package. In this video, we'll create a TypeScript project that will publish to GitHub and have a GitHub action automatically run the tools needed to build and distribute this to NPM. The package that we'll be using will be semantic release. This has lots of great features and it works based on the conventional commits. So if you follow conventional commits, then this is able to detect those and release the right versions to GitHub, depending on whether it's a break and release, a feature release, or a minor patch release. Uh, so it's really cool. It enforces some good best practices, um, and it does things like being able to publish to next tags. So if you want to distribute to specific tags on NPM, you can do that, and it's all part of the process uh, of following these semantic conventional commits, which is really cool. Um, there is another option, which is change sets. I prefer using semantic release for single repos. If you're using something like a mono repo, you might find change sets easier to work with if you have lots of packages that depend on one another. But I find this very easy to use, um, and I follow semantic conventional commits so this package is really easy to adopt. Um, so I think the first thing that we'll do is actually create a new repository for our project and then we'll work with that locally. So I'm on GitHub here and I'm just gonna create a new repository and I'm just gonna call this my first package. Um, and then you can make this public or private. We'll just choose private for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, and maybe in another video, we can have a look at how we can add renovate to keep these package dependencies up to date. But that's not in the scope of this video. We're just gonna go through the initial process of creating a package and releasing it to NPM. So I've cloned that empty GitHub repository to my local machine. And here I have an empty project that I can begin working with. The first thing that I like to do is run npm init, and this will ask me some questions about my package. The first thing that we'll do is give it a name, and this will be called my first package. However, we're gonna prefix the name of this with our npm organization name, and we'll have a look at that in just a second. So we'll give this a name of at launch made slash my first package, and for the version, we can just agree to everything here. We don't have anything else, so uh, let's just agree to all of these, and this will create the file package.json in the root of our project. We need to install some dependencies and configure semantic release, and we can do that using this package.json file. But first, let's talk about this at launch made. If we head on over to NPM and we log in, or you create an account if you haven't done so, we can go to our account section and we can choose from the right to add a new organization. If we open this up, we can see that we can give a name for our organization. And in my case, it was launch made organization. So I'm not going to recreate it. But once you have given it a name, you can choose on what type of package that you want to publish. You can do private packages or you can do public packages. And I've just chosen the free version. So once you've created that, you'll have an empty NPM organization. And if you want to publish a package inside of this organization, then you need to prefix your package names with at organization name. So that's what we've done inside of our package JSON here. Now for the purposes of this video, let's install a dependency that is TypeScript and we'll take a source file and we'll run that through TSC and we'll output some JavaScript. And depending on what kind of project you are building, you'll want to install and configure and do all of your things that you need to do inside of your package. But for now, let's just work with a simple TypeScript file and we'll install the dev dependency TypeScript. Then for our scripts, I'm just gonna include one script here that is build and we'll run TSC. Now, right now we need to create a TS config file in the root of our project. And I'm just gonna give some defaults here. And depending on the project that you have, you may want to configure some of these options differently. And there are various other options as well. But the most important thing for following along in this tutorial is that we have a source directory. So we'll need to create a file inside of that that is called index.ts. Then once we have our index.ts, we can add all of the code for our package. In this example, we're just gonna export one function that is greet that takes in a name argument. That is the string and it returns a string type. Next, let's install semantic release and we'll install that as a dev dependency. Now that's installed, if we go back to package.json, we can see that we have semantic release installed. Now I'm gonna add another script that is called semantic release and that just runs semantic release. Now let's create a new file called release config.cgs in the root of our project. He will specify the different branches that we have in our repository that we want to configure. 
And using GitHub Copilot here, it has completed this for us. So we have the branch main, which will deploy to the main distribution on NPM. But also if we have a branch called next, it will treat this as a pre-release. And what that does when it publishes to NPM is it will tag it as next and it will keep the versions updated on that next tag, which is really cool. So we'll save the release.config.cgs file. And to test that everything works inside of the root of our project, we'll just run npm run build. And we'll see that this has created the file inside of the disk folder index.js that contains the JavaScript for a package that we want to publish to npm, which is really cool. Now let's update package.json to include a few more configuration options that we need when working with semantic release and generally publishing to npm. The first thing that I like to do is just define the files that I want to publish to npm. And for this example, I just want to publish the disk folder and we'll publish an optional readme.md file. We haven't created that yet, but we will in just a second. And then because we're working inside a organization on NPM, we'll need to add the config for when we publish that we want the access to be public. If you have a paid NPM account, you could change this to private. Then let's update the version and paste this value. This is so semantic release can detect the version and manage that version automatically for us. Now inside the root of our project, we'll create the GitHub action that will automatically publish this to NPM on the main tag or our next pre-release tag. And we can do that by creating the folder GitHub slash workflows and then create the file. I like to just call this release.yml. If you need to run different steps for different versions of your packages, then you might want to create different workflows. But for me, I just like to create one workflow and give it a name of release. But first I want to run this workflow when anyone pushes to the branches main and next. We'll then need to specify the different permissions for this workflow and contents issues and pull requests will allow the right permission. That's so we can do things like comment on issues to automatically close them and it can comment on the pull request itself the version that it published to NPM, which is really cool. And we'll see that at the end of the video. Now, all we need to do is define all of the different steps and jobs for our GitHub action. So for this, we are only going to have one action that is release. So thanks to GitHub Copilot, we're pretty much there. For the release job, we run all of these different steps. We install dependencies, we build our project, and then we run the audit signatures which just detects the integrity of packages to make sure they are what they say they are and they're coming from the right source. Then we run the step release, which has two environment variables, which we'll need to configure on GitHub. First is the GitHub token itself, which is populated automatically by GitHub actions, and then the NPM token, which we'll need to create on the NPM website. And then finally, we will run the semantic release. Now you could run NPM run semantic release because we added this as a script, or you could run npx semantic release. Let's go with npx semantic release, thanks to GitHub Copilot. And we'll just forget about what we configured earlier, but you can run any other actions you need. Now, if we go back to npm and we click on our username, here we can go to access tokens and we can create a new token. There are two types of tokens here. I'm just gonna create the classic token. And from here, we'll just give this a name of GitHub actions. And then from here, we can select the type of token that this is. And I'm just going to select automation here because it can bypass the two factor auth and it's used for things like GitHub Actions and our CI CD workflows. With that selected, we'll go down to generate token. And because I'm part of the organization launch made, I have access to publish to that. If I tried to use my token and didn't have permission to write to that organization, then this wouldn't work. If you wanted to create an access token that is only scoped to a certain package, then you can create a granular access token. And it's what I would recommend. Now back over on GitHub, if we go to settings and we scroll down and we go to secrets and variables, then we go to actions. We can then create a new secret and we'll call this NPM token. And then we'll paste in the value that we got from NPM. Now with this saved, I'm gonna do one more thing and create a git ignore. I'm going to ignore dist and node modules. Then finally, we'll create that file readme.md and we'll just specify that this is my first package. And if you wanted to include some instructions on how users can install this, then you could show that here as npm install slash launch made slash my first package. 
Now for the purposes of this video, let's just go ahead and add everything to our git commit. And if we check the status here, we're going to add all of these different files, including the source TS file and our GitHub action. And now we'll just create a new commit and we're going to prefix this with feet my first package. Now I'm going to publish this to the main branch. And if we go back on over to GitHub and go to code, we'll now be able to see that we've published all of our code and that GitHub Actions is running. If we open the details here, we can see that we are starting a job and it's running through all of those steps that we configured. And there we have it, the GitHub Action has run successfully and if we scroll up, we can see the steps that were taken. We can see that we first built the project, then we ran the audit signatures, and then the release step was run using MPX semantic release. And if we look instead of here, we can see that it's loaded a bunch of different plugins. And uh, if we keep scrolling down, we'll be able to see that it has created a new package and it's tagged it 1.0.0. And then we can see here that it's found the file readme.md and the file dist slash index.js. And this index.js is the output from our build script. And we can see that it's then found the package JSON and it has deployed this to NPM. So if we go back to NPM and we go to our organization, we should now see that we have a package at launch made slash my first package. Awesome. And here we can see that it's the version 1.0.0 that it tagged and that it was published two minutes ago. And here we can see the output of our readme.md that contains the instructions for our users to install. And all of this was done automatically thanks to GitHub Actions. But you'll have noticed that I commit to the main branch and I didn't go via a pull request. So let's try out what that workflow looks like. So now let's create a new branch just to test out what the workflow looks like from creating a pull request to merging to automation. And here we'll just call this my new feature. Now inside index.ts, let's just update our package now to include some more code. And then we can commit our changes. Now the commit message is what tells semantic release how to publish this to NPM and what type of version number to use. And this follows the semver, the semantic versioning, and we're using conventional commits. So here we have some example commit messages and the release types that semantic release uses. So here we have fix in the prefix, and this releases a fix release. Here we have feet, this releases a feature release. Performance, break and change, will release a major release. So now let's use the fix prefix. And I'm in brackets, I will call this greet because I'm fixing the greet function here. And then we'll push this to GitHub. Now back inside of GitHub, if I go to my repository and we see that we have a new branch, we'll open a pull request. Now this pull request could be created by you or it could be created by someone else that contributes to your project. Now it's important when we commit this to main or the next branch, that it uses the correct conventional commit. So we'll update the title here to make that correct. And then we'll open this pull request. Now we'll see here that there isn't anything to be done and I can approve pull requests. And if we go down and click merge pull request, now with that merged, if we go to actions, we should now see that we have a workflow running. And if we have a look inside of here, we'll see that it's going through all of the steps. And we can see here inside of the release step that it's found two commits since the last release and it's analyzed those commits. If we scroll down, we can see here that we have the disk tag latest and that it's created a new package, my first package, and now the version 1.0.1. And that is this fix minor update, which is really cool. If you go back to NPM and we click refresh, we should see now that just a minute ago, we have published a new version. 1.0.1. Now let's explore how we can use a pre-release tag by creating a new branch that we'll call next. So back inside of GitHub, if we go to our code and inside of here, we create the branch next. And now we'll open a new pull request against this branch next. We'll just use GitHub to edit our code here and we'll revert back to what we had before. We'll commit those changes and we'll use the commit message, fix, greet, and again, we'll update the output. Now, if we commit those changes to the branch next, the GitHub action will automatically detect that 
and it will begin to run the semantic release job. Now we can see that it's detected those changes once again, but now instead of the package being my first package at 1.0.2, it has also attached this next distribution tag. And depending on how many times you merge branches to the next or you commit to the next branch, it will bump this number one. but you can just install it by using at next. So if we go over to NPM and we refresh and we go to versions, we'll see that we ha now have three versions and we now have the package 1.0.2 hyphen next dot one. And we can install that by using the tag at next. So if you are a consumer of this package and you want to install the latest version from NPM, you would do NPM install, give it the scope of the package name, then the package name itself. But if you wanted to install what's coming next, maybe you could give your users a pre-release, you can attach at next and this will install that package. Once you're ready to publish to the latest distribution tag on NPM, you can merge the next branch into main. So let's take a look if we create a new pull request and we compare next. Here we can see that we have the commit update output. If we go to create a new pull request here, now with this pull request opened, if we go down and merge, this will run all the necessary tasks in order to update the latest tag on NPM. If we also go back to our pull requests and look at the one that we created earlier, we'll see that the GitHub action commented on this PR. And it did that because it had permissions because we configured that and we can see the version on NPM that this code was included with, which is really cool. And this is really helpful when other third parties contribute to your packages that they can also see when their code goes into production. So that's been a quick look at how you can use GitHub Actions with Semantic Release to automatically publish your packages to NPM on the latest and next distribution tags. In a different video, we'll learn how we can use change sets with monorepos to do the same thing. I'll see you in the next video.